Okay, here we go. This is, I believe, June 2009. June 2009. Here are the answers to June 2009. Let's go through these. The first one, this is a simple proportion question. I have to get my red pen out. This is a simple proportion question. All we got to do is um, 45 minutes to do 5 miles. So 45 minutes, that's minutes, over 5 miles. And so anyway, that's just a simple proportion. And we're going to do minutes over miles. So it wants to know about 8 miles. So we'll put 8 miles down here. And X minutes up here. And if you just cross multiply, 45 times 8 is, what's that, 360? 360 equals 5X. And... 360 divided by 5 should be 72. It is, and the answer is 72. And, you know, make sure your answer makes sense. Obviously, it has to be more than 45 minutes, and it's about half more because it's three more miles. So these answers over here don't make any sense whatsoever. Oh, that's hours. This is minutes. I guess maybe it makes sense. I don't know. That's just another jerky question asking those. Okay, so there's two ways to do this problem. You can either factor it, and you get x and x. Uh, since this is a positive, both signs have to be the same. They're both going to be negative. So minus 1, minus 6, and that makes x equals 1, and x equals 6. Choice 4. Of course, the other thing I can do is just plug them in. For example, I can plug in 1. Or just stow x into, you know, 1 stow x, and then just type in the original equation. Either way is fine. All right, so let me move down a little bit. A new computer, so hopefully this is all working. All right, remember when you divide, um, when you are dividing, you have to subtract the fractions, or subtract, excuse me, subtract the exponents. Um, you know, I always like to say, who's got more, the numerator or the denominator? And whoever's got more is going to keep more. Okay, so let's take care of the number first. 9 goes into itself once, 9 goes into 27 three times. Who has more x's? Obviously, the numerator does. It has how many more? It has 12 more. Who has more y's? Obviously, the numerator does. How many more? It has 4 more. So the answer is 3x to the 12th, y to the 4th. Now, if you don't like that, for number 3, what you could have done is do, like, for example, 2 stow x, 3 stow y. Don't forget, in order to get the y, you have to hit alpha, and I believe it's the number 1 for y. And then just type in these, this original equation, this 27x to the 18th. Make sure you use the alpha y equals... The alpha y equals, the alpha y equals will give you a nice little fraction to make it easy for you. All right, so Maria uh, currently has a collection of 58 stamps. If she buys stamps each week for W weeks, which expression represents the total number of stamps she will have? She currently has 58. So whatever she has, we're going to take 58 and we're going to add... Um, she buys S stamps per week. So S stamps every week, so that's just going to be S times W. And that will give us how much she has. Kind of a tricky question. Choice 2 is the answer for number 4. I'm going to start with 58, and we're going to add S per week. Now, that's kind of abstract and kind of crazy. So I guess, you know, what I might think about doing for there is just say, okay, she's going to buy 5 stamps for two weeks. So she's got 58, and she buys five stamps for two weeks. That's five stamps for the first week, plus five stamps for the second week. She'd have 60 stamps. And then you can just check to see which one would also give you 60. Just another way to think about doing the problem. All right, as qualitative, if you remember that, if you check in your flashcards, hopefully you've done your flashcards, qualitative means things that are qualities, smells, ages, colors, 
things that are descriptive, not numbers that I can take means, means, and mode of, mean, meaning, and mode of. Those would be quantitative. Qualitative would be not um, are things that are quality. So the ages of Spanish students, no, that's quantitative. The test scores, quantitative. The favorite ice cream color, come on, that's so easy. Of course, the answer is three. That's a simple question. All right, the, shine below, the sign below shows, is posted in front of roller coasters at the Wadsworth Country Fairs. Um, all riders must be at least, so really this is just a fancy way of saying at least, at least. So you know, I mean, this kind of makes sense, that you have to be at least 48 inches tall. Be careful, it's not less than or equal to. It's obviously greater than or equal to. So obviously it's going to be one of these two. We're going to do greater than or equal to 48. You could be 48, as long as you make it exactly, you can be there, or you can be greater than all right, moving down. All right, so you got a couple of different options for doing this one. You know, you can cheat. You can say, okay, I'm going to store 2 into X. So do 2, stow, don't forget it's Ebonics, down near the equal, um, the enter, the on button. It's down near the on button. 2, stow, X. And then you can use your alpha Y equals and do 2X over 3 plus X over 6. And, oh, wait, why would I pick 2? Does it make sense to pick 2? Is this really what I want to do? Because you got to be careful. It's not really what I want to do. i got to choose these answers over here in order to try these answers to see which one I'm going to store it into. So that's not exactly what I want to do. What I want to do is um, try. let's try 6. I can try 6, or I could try 10 and see which one works. Um... But let's do it the mathematical way, because I just assume do it the mathematical way. So let me get rid of my mistake, because I shouldn't have made that mistake. You, you'll use 2 when you have no choice, or when you have no question, or when you don't know, but or 3, or whatever. Um, but when you, when you have multiple choice answers, you have to try that. So um, we're going to do it the smart way. We'll do 2 o x over 3 plus x over 6 equals 5. If I look at the denominator, 3... 6, and remember this is 1, the common denominator is 6. So I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything through by 6. I'll put a 6 here, I'll put a 6 here, and I'll put a 6 here. Here, 3 goes into 6 twice. This leaves me 4x. The 6s here is cancel. That leaves me plus x equals 30. Or 5x equals 30, or x equals equals 6. And there's my answer. x equals 6. Now, of course, if I checked it, and I did 6 sto x, and I plugged this in, that would give me 2 times 6 over 3 plus 6 over 6. 2 times 6 is 12, divided by 4 is, or by, divided by 3 is 4, plus 1, and of course, that equals 5. All right. Here we go. Um, students in Miss Nazareth's math class toss a six-sided number cube whose faces are numbered one through six. The results are recorded in the table below. Um, okay. Based on this data, what is the empirical? Now, empirical probability, it just means what was the experiment? Experimental probability. What was the experimental probability? Okay, what happened here? Now, I know it should be 1 out of 6, 1 out of 6, 1 out of 6. But in this case, what is the empirical probability of tossing a 4? All right, well, if I look at the 4s, there were 6 4s. Um, and I don't know how many times they, t how many times she tossed it, but she got 6 4s. Um, so, let's see. She looks like, I'm going to guess she tossed it 30 times based on all the answers. Wait, um, what is what? So, um, so it'd probably just be six out of thirty. But if they didn't, if they just weren't all thirty, you'd actually have to add all these up and verify that. Yeah, in fact, they do add up to thirty. In this case, it's just six out of thirty. Pretty simple. Theoretical probability be one out of six, but in this case, is all right. As soon as I see a right triangle, I think of two things. I think of sine, cosine, or tangent. 
for the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Since I have not been given an angle, nor have I been asked for an angle, obviously then we're going to use sine cosine tangent. So it's just 3 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. And of course, this is x we're looking for. Uh, 25 plus 9 is 34 equals x squared. And this is the part you all seem to forget. At the end, hopefully you're, you'll start to remember this. I just take the square root of both sides. And there's my answer. Not to mention, this answer doesn't make sense because you know it's got to be bigger than that. The square root of 15 is less than 4, right? Because the square root of 16 is 4. So that doesn't make any sense. So these are the only two answers, actually, that make any sense. Next two, you'll learn that 8 doesn't make any sense, but that's in geometry. All right, what is expressed in simplest radical form? Well, you'd love this question on a test because I could just type in the square root of 32 in my calculator and I would get some decimal. And then I could type in one of these and get the exact same decimal. But, of course, we'd like to do it the mathematical way, which is we break it down into its biggest perfect square and not perfect square. 16 times 2 is 32. The square root of 16 is... Four. So my answer is four squared for number ten. If the speed of sound is 344 meters per second, what is the approximate speed of sound in meters per hour? Wow. 344 meters per second per one second. So if I want per hour, I really just need to multiply by 60, which means it's going to be a whole lot more. So I'm going to take, oh, wait a second, this is per six second. This is, so there's 60 seconds in a minute, so I'm going to multiply by 60 seconds. That would give me one minute, but they want per hour. Holy macro, i got to multiply by 60 again. So I'm going to guess it's probably one of these really big ones. Take 344, I'm going to multiply by 60, and then I'm going to multiply by 60 again, and I get that 1, 2, 3, 8, 4, 000. The sum of two numbers is 47, so x plus y equals 47, and their difference is 15, x minus y, oops, 47, equals 15. Wasn't this an easy problem? This was an easy problem, wasn't it? Sum, 47, difference is 15. Come on now, that's not too bad. Um, and if I solve this, I, I would get 2x, if I just add these. 2x equals, what's that, 62. So x equals 31, and then the other one I would have to be, of course, 16. Or I could just say this is the larger number. What would the smaller number be? Well, um, if this is the larger number, 16, and they have to have, add up to 47, then the larger number would have to be 31. Wait, this is the larger number. Then the smaller number would be 31. That doesn't make any sense. If this is the larger number, 31, the smaller number would have to be... Oops, 16 to add up. And now I'm working backwards. Remember, I'm going to work backwards. 31 plus 16 is 47. And if I subtract those, I also get 15. So the answer is 2. All right, here we go. A little literal equation. Do you see? I bet they're going to solve. Find the value of A. Oh, that's not bad. I'm going to find the value of A. Oh, hold on a second. There are two A's. If you remember correctly, if there are two A's, we are going to end up factoring out an A. So A plus AR equals B plus R. So I'm going to factor out the A, and I'm left with 1 plus, don't forget there's a 1 right there, 1 plus R equals B plus R. And then I simply divide by 1 plus R. 1 plus R. And so it's B plus R over 1 plus R, choice 3, for number, um, what is this, 13? Number 3, all right. Two more problems in this first segment, and then we'll be done, and then I'll go move on to the next segment. 
which value, blah, blah, blah. Now, be careful. This is going to be one of those tricky ones. It's got the strictly less than. Of course, you can just do 8 sto x. Type this in. See if it's less than 17. 9 sto x. See if it's less than 17. Or we can do it the right way. 4 over 3x plus 5 is less than 17. Multiply this by 3. Multiply this by 3. Multiply this by 3. Here, the 3s cancel. End up with 4x plus 15 is less than 51. I subtract the four, 15. I get 4x is less than... Um, 4x is less than 36, and I get x is less than 9. And of course, everybody's going to pick 9. Ooh, I got 9. Ooh, I got 9. Don't pick 9. It's less than 9. The one that's less than 9 is choice 1. Don't make silly mistakes. All right. Almost done. Box and whisker plot represents the student scores. What is the value of the upper quartile? If you remember, this is the min. This is the max. If I wanted the range, I would just subtract those. This is quartile 1. This is the median for quartile 2. And this is the quartile 3 or the upper quartile. Upper quartile, quartile 3. Oh, everybody wants to say 82. Be careful. 82 is not even an answer. That's good. Because every one of these dots represents 2. So that's 82, 84. The answer is 84. All right, that ends 1 through 15. I will come back for 16 through 30, and then we'll do the rest of it.